But in other ways, we're on our last legs. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And we're just a microcosm of the larger universe and what's happening. The news is so incredibly important today that I absolutely am going to put myself into the calm mode that I'm able to do, but seldom able to uh, t carry out on air because there's just so much news and so much information. But let me just calmly lay out that if you go even to mainstream statements by the current head of the DHS and the former head of the DHS, Jay Johnson, and what's happening and what our reporters have videotaped and witnessed and what's happening across the United States and what's being organized, the UN funded by elements of our own government and stay behind groups put in power by Hillary and Obama help collapse Europe with the help of the EU with over 10 million military age men the last seven years to where Europe is just wrecked, 80 plus percent uh, less terrorism, crime rates off the charts, just, just bedlam. Thousands of cars burned per week, hundreds per night, mass stabbings, sex slavery. The third world in many areas is hell. And we are in an existential threat crisis here. And just as they ran the same operation with North African and Middle Easterners and others, I guess Europe in the last seven, eight years, the exact same people are running an attempt with not one but two caravans of over 40,000. Now, the government's saying 40,000. They were saying that it was 1,000 before and it was 50,000. So I don't know. But they're always a lot bigger than they say. And there's caravans arriving every day of 100, 200, 500, 1,000. And Beto O'Rourke is there as a literal treasonous traitor, organizing it and bragging that it's happening. People are coming across not being tested for diseases. They've been caught smuggling children in mass. This is insanity. Total insanity. But it's designed to bring the country down. And you've got that backdrop with the deep state trying to overthrow Trump. All Trump is doing is the basic default that anybody would do to keep the country from collapsing. But it's not enough because the attack's been launched. And Trump can't get the laws or the funding to stop it. And once they overwhelm the courts and once they overwhelm the detention facilities, it's over. You'll have 10 million people in the next year come in. It was a million and a half illegals they know of last year, probably four million they don't. 10 million is now estimated will pour in this year. 10 million people. And there is a crime culture, an MS-13 and a smuggling culture, and all the lawlessness you see in Latin America is now here. And it's causing giant crime explosions. So when we come back, it's front and center. Red alert is the headline on Infowars.com. The UN-funded migrant caravans designed to collapse our borders and our nation are in full swing. And, 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 and now, when I come back, all the, not just the United States, but that Europe has ever seen, pointed at completely breaking our border. And I know our audience gets this our general, regular, great audience. But we're on so many radio and TV stations, we have a lot of new viewers all the time. They don't understand what the plan is here. There's a diagrammed, laid-out operation. And the way I liken it to is a dam. Water is a great thing to drink and to cook your food with, and you got to have it. But if you've got a big dam, like you've seen all over the country, uh, this year and last year, record floods. When dams break, houses get destroyed, people get killed. Water is a wonderful thing until a few trillion gallons of it come rushing down at you. Or a few billion gallons. Now, there's a photo of Austin flooded last year. And that's exactly what's happening here. Floods of crime, floods of disease, and the UN funding and all to overwhelm the beds. The Democrats wanted in the latest budget plan 
a cap at 16,700 beds. Ladies and gentlemen, some estimates are 50,000 people are hitting the border a day. 1.5 million illegals got apprehended last year. Look it up. Millions more, they don't know. It's set to be 10 million this year. I'm going to show you all the articles in a moment. 10 million people. You ever been in a big football game, 100,000 people? It's kind of scary when the stands let out because everybody goes so quick instead of slowly going in. There's that fear of that flood, isn't it? You instinctively know it's dangerous. People get killed in stampedes. But imagine tens of thousands of day, men, women, and children, little kidnapped children. That's all confirmed. And so we have 100,000 beds. The Democrats want it at 16,700. Now, there are two caravans of over 40,000 people, it's estimated, set to smash into the U.S. in about two weeks. They're being trucked up, most of them. Almost all of military-age men, but the trader media will go show a few women that are in the crowd to pull on heartstrings. When they collapse the courts and collapse law enforcement and the border, it's over. Like Europe, it's broken. 10 million in Europe the last seven years, almost all military-age men. We're about to see 10 million, it's estimated, in the next 12 months, not fiscal year 2019. The Border Patrol put out statements, they said, in the next 12 months. They said that this weekend. Here's the headlines. Dr. McCam shot, please. Obama-era DHS chief Jay Johnson says U.S. has a crisis at the southern border and that the border is being imploded and overwhelmed and we may lose full control of the border. He's just saying two plus two equals four. Trump cuts aid to Central American countries as migrant crisis deepens. That's where they organize them, all the way as far south as Venezuela, because Brazil won't let them in. They come up, they surge, highest levels of criminals, highest levels of child trafficking. It's all confirmed. You can pull the Washington Post up, they admit that. Under the Obama era, they knowingly turn children over to pedophiles. Just, hey, you got a bunch of kids with you. Whatever, do whatever you want. We don't even need to know who you are. But when I fly back in from Canada or England, I get asked a bunch of questions and checked, which is fine. It's a border. It's our country. That's where the checkpoints are supposed to be. Not internal. If I fly to Dallas to see family on a 30-minute flight, you get to ask questions, get everything searched. And I don't know why. It's because jihadis might blow the plane up. But the point is, is that's an internal checkpoint that they rationalize instead of simply profiling who's really doing the, the terror attacks. We're all treated like criminals, but the major border's open? Let's continue. Trump cuts aid to Central American countries as migrant crisis deepens. Exactly what he had to do. The Associated Press reports. U.S. government cut aid to El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras on Saturday after President Donald Trump blasted the Central American countries for sending migrants to the United States and threatened to shutter the U.S.-Mexico border. That's the only way to exercise power over Mexico that gets over $100 billion trade deficit a year, gets over $500 billion from the U.S. every year. Not to mention about a third of the paychecks of half of Mexico living up here being sent back. You add that in, it's over $700 billion Mexico gets from us. One-way deal, but we're the evil El Norte. Trump is really fighting back, but he has to. The Democrats think you're idiots. They just had the first wave to get everybody used to seeing that they got in and got asylum. Because after they climb the fences, the war patrol by law has to turn them over to judges, not send them back. you got to stop them before they get here. But if you even hold people, oh, they're in cages, oh, and they show Obama-era cages. We've never seen anything like this. As Trump threatens to close the border, migrants overwhelm Texas, USA Today. The Border Patrol says it's double anything they've ever seen. Diseases, smuggling. And by the way, I played local news out of New York. Guess where all the measles outbreaks came from? Oh, in Oregon, too, illegal aliens. Oh, but people that haven't been up-to-date vaccinated, it's our fault, even though we didn't cause it. Spring brings surge of migrants stretching border facilities far beyond capacity. MSN. Crime exploding across South Texas. Southern Arizona and California, it's just horrible. 
America at the immigration breaking point, according to Border Patrol head. Head of the Customs and Border Patrol says that it's broken. Mexico braces for new caravan of Central American migrants, the biggest yet, AP. Donald Trump, illegal immigrants met by Democratic lawyers at the border, which is true. This is a system-wide collapse. Texas border city overwhelmed by surge of Central American migrants. The border is beyond broken. But meanwhile, O'Rourke champions U.S.-Mexico border during Texas kickoff. And you've heard his quotes. We played them before. He repeated them all last night. I sat there and watched him say it as I bullhorned him. And by the way, we took most of it over. It's incredible. He sat there and he said there is no border crisis and we shouldn't have a border at all. He puts out press releases about how he's helping caravans get into the U.S. Meanwhile, you turn into CNN, they go, there are no caravans. Remember all the CNN reporters? Jake Tapper, the usual suspect, saying there is no crisis. Think of how much disdain they have for you, how dumb they think you are. Open borders, CNN promotes sanctuary activists who shield illegals from ICE agents. Meanwhile, Tapper Defense CNN says we didn't get anything wrong in Russia, hoax collusion. This country is under a massive crisis if they break the borders. If these next caravans get over, if the world sees that, then the real big waves come, and the Border Patrol estimates the next 12 months, by the third month of 2020, 10 million people will come in illegally. I mean, this is just insane. Then they're given the names of dead people to vote, and it's game over. That's why Beto and all the rest of them have it up in Spanish. They're telling illegal aliens to vote, but that does come up to all of you and God above. And so I petition God and I petition you to search your heart and decide where you want this information warfare system to go because I am in your hands. We are in each other's hands. And I say the things that others don't say. I say them up front with research. Now I've pointed out treason that's going on against this republic. And I pointed out who's involved and how it's multinational corporations using big tech, big banks, and non-governmental organizations to implode borders and destroy nation states to consolidate control. And you've seen the deep state work to overthrow nationalists here, but also overseas, and destroy the free press. And so the question that Greg Reese asked in this important report that we're about to premiere here, it'll then be posted to Infowars.com, and newswars.com is, has treason been committed? And that's an overused term, but in this case, yes. Google and others moving to China, helping suppress their people, helping actively work against the U.S. when they're a U.S.-based company that was created by DARPA. That's the daddy group of the whole deep state. That is the classic treason. So is trying to implode your borders and, and, and admittedly saying you're doing it. The Democrats say America was never great. It'll never be that great. They are the outside force. But under this particular law and, and, and several others, we've got them dead to rights. And then I'll play Giuliani saying criminal charges, criminal investigations are ongoing against the deep state and that Trump does intend to move forward on that. So that's a really good sign. You ask what the solution is, cut the funding from the Soros group and USAID and all these UN groups flooding the borders. Uh, cut the funding from the third world countries uh, that are aiding and abetting this, the State Department funding. Trump just did that. Uh, cut the funding. Cut the funding from big tech when it helps uh, censor. Pull the U.S. government contracts. They already have no respect for our government. They're already actually not even willing to serve the U.S. government. We are down the rat hole far. The treason is great, ladies and gentlemen. The evil is strong. But if we wake up, we're stronger with God's help. So here is Greg Reach's powerful report that will be posted in the next hour to Infowars.com. Only you can spread it if you decide to carry out this mission. That's what it's all about if you choose to accept this mission. This, is, this, isn't, a, this isn't a movie. This isn't some drama. It's not a Netflix show. It's not Mission Impossible. It's the real Mission Possible. The law that can take down the deep state, 18 U.S. Code 2385. And I don't want to hear it was misapplied during World War II. I get that. It's properly applied here. Not to races or groups of people like Japanese or some Germans, but directly at the deep staters. Here it is.
Now that the Mueller investigation is over, many questions are falling upon Adam Schiff and others who all claimed to have direct knowledge of criminal evidence against President Donald Trump. I think there's plenty of evidence of collusion or conspiracy in plain sight. Cold, hard evidence. Have you seen things on the classified side that you cannot tell us about, though, that is even stronger evidence than what is out there publicly? Yes. Some people are saying they are guilty of treason, but the statute for treason specifies that the person levies war against the United States or adheres to their enemies. And while we may discover that may be true for some, there is one statute that seems to apply to many. Enacted in 1940 as the Alien Registration Act, or the Smith Act, 18 U.S. Code 2385 prescribes advocating the overthrow of the U.S. government. The corrupt establishment was not willing to accept an outlier in the White House and began their attempt at overthrowing the president with a FISA warrant based on a fake Russian dossier. With no evidence of a crime, the FBI was discussing plans for a coup d'etat. According to court documents, several mainstream media outlets were hired to report on Russian interference as directed. And the American people, who put their faith in the mainstream media, were manipulated and turned against their lawful elected government. It all certainly seems to fit 18 U.S. Code 2385. Whoever knowingly or willfully advocates, abets, advises, or teaches the duty, necessity, desirability, or propriety of overthrowing or destroying any government of the United States. The government's gonna kill this guy. Whoever, with intent to cause the overthrow or destruction of any such government, prints, publishes, edits, issues, circulates, sells, distributes, or publicly displays any written or printed matter advocating, advising, or teaching the duty, necessity, desirability, or propriety of overthrowing or destroying any government in the United States. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday of getting back at you. Whoever organizes or helps or attempts to organize any society, group, or assembly of persons who teach, advocate, or encourage the overthrow or destruction of any such government by force or violence, or becomes or is a member of or affiliates with any such society, group, or assembly of persons knowing the purposes thereof. Those found guilty of 18 U.S. Code 2385 can be imprisoned for up to 20 years, and perhaps further investigations will lead to charges of sedition or even treason. The righteous heart wants justice to be served, for where there is no law, there is no freedom. Reporting for Infowars.com, this is Greg Reese. Infowars, tomorrow's news today. So you heard everything the president's now saying two plus years ago directly we're first always first the most accurate and i'm not saying that with pleasure it's like sticking your head in a guillotine and that's why they're like get him off the air get him off get him off because i actually go research deep state how they overthrew other governments how the big endowments work how the big foundations work and so we know what their next moves are going to be too and how to counter them but this is a rogue group of anti-Americans that have hijacked the country, who were in bed with the Chai Coms, and who have brainwashed a large portion of the country to literally hate loyal Americans. I had countless people today when I took my two-year-old daughter shopping and took my wife to lunch. Of course, there's the war room with the one, the only, Owen Schroyer. And last night, we were out in the field. I had three security guys with me. Owen had one. Uh, well, against 3,000 vicious, hateful, uh, Beto O'Rourke supporters, foaming at the mouth, screaming, trying to physically attack me. Uh, we had to get surrounded by the police before I'd ever even turned the bullhorn on. I mean, these people are 
crazed. But they are the victims of brainwashing. But we have to stand up against these bullies. Now, so the UN working with traitors in our government has collapsed Europe's borders, working with the EU. They admit it's their plan, replacement migration, and they want to make us politically socialist because they believe third world populations are more malleable in their own white papers. Now they're trying to completely break our border, and if this latest group of millions coming get to get in, it will overwhelm things completely in an already overburdened system on the verge of collapse. That is treason. And not once, not twice, but three times this week, President Trump that I know of talked about how the deep state needs to be punished for the fraud, the hoax of trying to bring down the people's election. He also talked about it uh, again when he was in that speech in Michigan. We're going to play that later. But think about how crazy the times have gotten. This is an Alex Jones, January 2017, saying the deep state is using funding in the John Warner Defense Authorization Act. Here's the executive order. Here's the code to set up a group to burrow into the government, to overthrow the election, to declare a national emergency, to federalize elections under UN control and never have another real election again, bringing in a true dictatorship of the Democratic Party. You don't just have dictatorships of a dictator. That just means directing. You have oligarchies. And we had oligarchs literally setting up a similar system to what they had in Russia. Another Christian nation, the globalists ran into the ground. And so we're here at the precipice right now. And I just played you that powerful report on how this is treason and we have laws to deal with it. And I'm going to play the president talking about it as well with Netanyahu. But that's where we are. This really happened. We have the emails. We have the text messages. We have the illegal warrants. We have the lies. And we have the corporate media in unison. And by the way, I I'm not complaining, but listeners need to understand this. By calling me a Russian, they were allowed to use leftist funding and leftist groups in the CIA to do all the PR runs, the attacks, the coordinated disinfo, the lawsuits, all of it. That's admittedly coordinated out of the Central Intelligence Agency on record. And they're doing it to not just me, but a lot of other people. But it's all unraveling now because people that were following orders, a lot of them believed it was really the U.S. government, and they really believed Trump was a Russian. They really believed I was a Russian. They really believed that Michael Caputo was a Russian. They had congressional hearings in 2017 saying Alex Jones works for the Russians. No proof, no due process. I didn't get called to testify. And that's in the House Defense Committee, Armed Services Committee. That, that's one of the most powerful committees with straight faces. Was it the Pentagon? It was Carnegie Endowment and Rockefeller Endowment and Board of Governors of the FCC. Not the, not the members and the chairman, but the governors behind it coming in and just lying because they had to have that for the people in government to watch it and believe that I was a Russian agent and Trump was a Russian agent. They had to say it openly or these people following orders to tap my phones, follow me, run black ops, harass me, try to destroy my family, sue me 20 something times, run hundreds of thousands of hit piece articles because they've written thousands and they syndicate them thousands of times. I'm telling you because I've been in the middle of this, and I'm not bitching or complaining. I'm proud to fight these people. I'm proud to be under attack by them. I don't enjoy it at a, at a, at a, at a, at a fleshly level, but a spiritual level. It's exactly where I want to be. But I want you to understand, we have come over the top here. we still got to get back down the mountain, but baby, we have, we've made it to the top, okay? We are now in the commanding position. They've been exposed. They've got other tricks up their sleeves, but their coup failed, and, and Trump's got all the dirt. And he must act against them. He must act against the censorship. So this is one hell of a time to be alive, I got to tell you. But for those of us at the tip of the spear, Trump's got protection now. Others do. They have picked me for destruction. You can see the big acceleration, the warm-up, thousands of articles the last few weeks. I mean, they are just, if they can't get Trump, they intend to get me because they know that you, the listeners, are who put Trump in, that we're the heart of the American reboot. And they don't want America to have culture. They don't want America to have will. They don't want us to have strength. And all I'm doing is promoting 
selling, you know, space heaters to Eskimos. They want them. Ice cones in hell. Snow cones in hell. People want them. Big old glass of iced tea in the Sahara Desert. I want it. You want it. It isn't hard to do the right thing, is it? Except a bunch of crooks come after you. But we're close to kicking their ass. But you want to give them the win to take me down? It's up to you. We need your prayers. We need you to go buy products and T-shirts at InfoWarsStore.com because it's an ongoing damn fight. Believe me. And it's nip and tuck, so your commitment is absolutely essential. Huge sale about to end. 60 to 50% off. Store-wide, free shipping, biggest sale ever. InfoWarsStore.com. Save the First Amendment. Stop Big Tech Censorship Special. You're seeing movement in that direction. Okay, let's get to it. Here's part of Giuliani, the full clip. Full interview is like 15 minutes long on InfoWars.com. You should go watch it. But here he is with uh, the, the, the judge they tried to get off air, but she's back, uh, laying everything out. Here it is. Will something happen now? Well, first of all, I know you agree with me. The people that indict are the corrupted politicians at the top of the FBI and DOJ. No field office of the FBI is implicated in this. Right. No agent who's sacrificing his life to protect us. It's a bunch of these phony politicians at the top who corrupt themselves because they want to suck up to who is ever in power. That, I would describe Comey that way, a whole bunch of other people like that. McCabe, his wife running for office, getting millions of dollars from Hillary's. These are, these are suck up politicians. They're not FBI agents like you know, All or right. police not officers. The guys that not you the guys who go out and arrest yes. people, put their lives on the line. Yep. My God, they'd probably, their hands would shake if they had to do that. Yes. So that's who we're talking about. Right, we're the upper echelon. What they did here, I believe over the next six months, we're going to uncover evidence that what they did here was criminal. This, this, this whole thing of collusion isn't true. I was with Donald Trump for the last five months of the campaign. He didn't ever talk to a Russian. He had nothing to do with a Russian. As he would point out, I don't speak Russian. <laughs> I don't, what are they doing this for? Right. Somebody made this up, Janine. Somebody conceived this. And they superimposed it. And then they went out to try yeah, to pause prove. right there. You know, this interview is so good. I think I'm going to come back and play more of it on the other side. Not just the three minutes. I think I'm going to play like six, seven minutes more because it's really powerful because he's a former federal prosecutor. She's a former judge. And they just lay it out. And I know you already know this, listeners, but these criminals are still, some of them still in the FBI. They're desperate now. They're even more dangerous. And then we also come back because I'm out of time now. We're going to play Trump talking about treason because it is treason. When it's treason, it's treason. And, and Trump is about to move on big tech. He's about to move on everybody else. Okay. And I'm going to explain all that next hour. Bob Barnes, one of the smartest people I know, uh, he's going to be in studio. He's also chief legal counsel here at InfoWars. That scared the hell out of the other side. Uh, we're going to get into what he thinks Trump should do, what the type of charges should be. He works in federal criminal areas as well. Uh, and we're going to break it all down coming up. And, and then, yes, we'll get to all the huge hit pieces. I was, And they're trying to smash our border. And CNN, remember, said over and over again and MSNBC, cops deserve to die because if a cop might have done something wrong in another state and then people just pull up and shoot five, ten cops, it's okay because cops deserve it. People said, Alex, you've gone from being Mr. Anti-Police State to, like, Mr. Pro-Cop. No, I was against a police state the Democrats were trying to set up and some blue-blood Republicans. I didn't mean I hate cops when the Democrats are promoting randomly killing cops as if cops deserve to randomly die, that's called authoritarianism. That's called an intimidation to get law enforcement under their control. But instead, all the Black Lives Matter, kill the cops crap, backfired, and the police under Obama got a crash course in the real world. They already knew to a great extent more than the general public, but they completely converted to reality. So I came around to the police, they came around to me. People ask how that happened. When the police were all buying ADL, Southern Poverty Law Center crap, hook, line, and sinker in most areas, and we're openly on the news going, we're prepared for war with the veterans, and we're going to confiscate their guns. Obviously, the average cop didn't like that, but that type of leadership had to be removed, and to some extent, it has been. Because the last thing we want is a civil war and a violent uprising in this country where the police are going to be put right in the middle of it.
And I don't even want to say the police are the least of our problems. They're not the problem. We are the problem. You know, I used to, I got more sophisticated about 10 years ago, six, seven years ago, really woke up. But I was like, why am I bitching at people making $20 an hour who are ordered to do this? Because I'd go through the TSA and I was so mean to them and I was attacking them. And they would give, they'd, they'd ask for autographs, they'd apologize, and they'd say, we want a union, we don't want to do this, we want a profile. And I, I, I guess it was so many of the TSA people being fans. And they said, why don't you ask Congress to change it, Mr. Jones? Why do you blame us? And about after the fifth time that happened, I went, uh, oh, well, why didn't I? Because at a visceral level, I'm not a terrorist. So what if I got a bottle of water in my wife's purse I forgot? Why are you in my face? And, you know, part of it was the training, and some of them are jerks, and it's a it's a rough job. I mean, it's you cattle cave, people mad, stressed out, going through there. You can smell the stress. I just got older, and I started thinking about how other people feel. And then I went, wait a minute. I need to lobby Congress to change these laws. See, it's up to us. We let this happen, and we have to stop it happening. But now we've got the president at Michigan rallies and in Oval Office uh, press briefings and on the road and getting on Air Force One saying there was an attempted overthrow, an attempted coup, it was criminal. And now they've been caught and they need to go to jail. You know how powerful that is because it's the truth. People say, well, that sounds radical. If you wake up at 2 a.m. and people are downstairs in your house ransacking things and you hear one of them and your kids are crying, it's an extreme thing that's happening. And you grab the shotgun and you go down there and you blast them. You don't want the extreme thing to happen. The extreme thing came to you. You've got a globalist coup over the country. You get the information, you indict their ass, you clean them out. People are like, well, they're going to fight back. They've already been fighting back. It's like the Merle Haggard song. I hear about some squirrely guy who just don't believe in fighting. And I wonder how long the rest of us can count on being free. And fighting just means fighting for American values and not backing down. You've seen what giving up the values does. It creates hell. And to be a man is to stop worrying about what happens to you at the end of the day. As long as you do the right thing, you're going to be fulfilled. I know the listeners know that. But I watch so many of these men out there and they think going around kissing ass with the system and going along with the globalist intimidation is gonna get them somewhere. It's not gonna get you anywhere but being enslaved. It's the same thing for women out there. It's called the animating contest of liberty by Thomas Jefferson because it is the animating contest. And look, there's all these men that work out and are in great shape, good for you, and they and they got Molon, Molon lobby stickers on their car, good. But we need you to run for office, or we need you to go speak at city council, or we need you to mentor a local student group to take them hunting or fishing. We just need to be humans, and we need men to be leaders. And I know the average alpha male actually just wants to run their own operation and be left alone and doesn't want to go command people around. It's control freaks that want power. Real alpha males just want to be successful in their own right and be left alone. Most alpha males I've found are really solitary creatures. And it's that problem. You're not going to be solitary and you're not going to be left alone unless you get out there and take action. And of course, a lot of other good, smart men I know are like, well, I need to plan it out. It needs to be perfect. I've got to do it just right. No, just do it. Get on the damn bike. You'll learn how to ride it. Half of what I do is a train wreck. I've been doing this 25 years. I was a mess when I first was doing it. But sometimes I got up there to speak at city council and people's jaws dropped and everybody started clapping and they said, fine, we won't pass that law. Even though they had every damn person on the city council ready to pass it. Sometimes I gave speeches so good, you've never heard somebody give one so good. And other times I was a gibbering moron. It doesn't matter. What matters is you mean to do good and you get your facts straight and you take action. If you don't, you're screwed. I said I'd be very relaxed today, and I was relaxed the first 30 minutes or so, but I start thinking about how epic it is that we had a literal total coup over everything, the plan to implode the country, break the border, under ChiCom control, Google, Apple, moving to China, they thought we were done. And in the midst of this, it's been almost 100-degree turnaround. 
Not 180 degrees yet, but we we have swung this baby around more way than we hadn't. We're more than halfway back, ladies and gentlemen. And it doesn't mean some utopia or some perfect world like the commies or the socialists or the New Agers always offer. It's just a world based on humans and based on being honest and based on justice and based on hard work and based on what we know works. We're getting closer to that every minute. And that's why you hear the screaming and the puling and the yelling by the evil ones and their minions because their whole universe is about controlling and running other people. Because if they can control the strong and the brave, then they could be somebody. The strong and the brave don't crave power. That's good. But you better crave freedom. And you better stand up for the women and children because you haven't been leaders and you've created a vacuum. Trump won't regulate for free speech, a prohibitory regulation saying no regulation. They've allowed the usurpation. Now the UN and New Zealand are dictating US regulations by fiat. I have stacks of mainstream news, word for word saying what I said two years ago. If you don't start saying no censorship, Mr. President, it creates a vacuum for these multinational bodies and the UN to take control of our internet, which we built and now it's happened. I'm right again. Sorry. Let's 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 go to the president talking about treason. Here it is. It's lasted a long time. We're glad it's over. It's uh, a 100 percent the way it should have been. I wish it could have gone a lot sooner, a lot quicker. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that have done some very very evil things, very bad things. I would say treasonous things uh, against our country, and uh, hopefully that people that have done such harm to our country. We've gone through a period of uh, really bad things happening. Uh, those people will certainly be looked at. I've been looking at them for a long time, and I'm saying, why haven't they been looked at? They lied to Congress. Many of them, you know who they are. Uh, they've done so many evil things. Uh, I will tell you, I love this country. I love this country as much as I can love anything. My family, my country, my God. But what they did, it was a false narrative. It was, it was a terrible thing. Uh, we can never let this happen to another president again. I can tell you that. I say it very strongly. Uh, very few people I know could have handled it. We can never, ever let this happen to another president again. Thank you all very much. Texas used to go all the way up. Guys, type in a Texas original topography. From the uh, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, it shot all the way up into Colorado, so the eastern part of Colorado, all the way down, part of New Mexico, what's well, Texas today, and all of Oklahoma. A little bit of a side history note for folks. Think about history. It's like a, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a, it's like a jigsaw puzzle or it's, or, or a, or a just the more pieces you put, the more you want to know, and then, and then everything starts making sense. And not really the pop history you get, but the deep history. You know, I had to suspend a lot of my deep historical research about a decade ago. I used to stay up at night a lot till 2, 3 in the morning reading history books still. But you know, I've got four children, and about after the second one or so, I just had to start cutting back. And so here we are. My real love is reading those history books. Yeah, I'll put that back on screen. My fellow Texan Merle Haggard. <laughs> Overlay that over a new map and show a Skokie or however you say it, Native American word up there in Oklahoma. As you can see, or I guess you could say that's also part of, I don't know, it's crazy. There's another map of that too. I guess that's also part of you know, a little bit of New Mexico. That's actually an intermediate map. There's actually an earlier one. That's what I'm seeing. There's an earlier, no. There's an earlier one that's even a bigger piece of that. But anyways, I digress. You don't tune in to hear my babblings half the time. They're distorted anyways. And, 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 I, and I'm honest about that. Jones admits he's distorted. Everything's distorted. Yeah, and there's even another version. See, there's been a bunch of versions of Texas. And when I say distorted, they all kind of just mix together. And then I can always go get a refresher, but that's why, as you get older especially, you need to, you know, go back and look. It's crazy when you're young, you can have a photographic memory. But when you're not, 
When you're young, you have a photographic memory, some of you, but you don't know how to use it. And when you get old, you don't have the photographic memory anymore, but you got some of the wisdom. And it's kind of how those two things mix together. All right, let me stop right there because I kind of went off the rails. Our guest will be here in about 15 minutes or so. I want, when we come back, I mean, there's really nothing more important than the attempt to crush our border, implode our currency, and kill the nation than the traitors trying to demoralize and break the country up with the classic psychological warfare, race baiting and sexist baiting and all of it. And it's not our opinion it's being done to break us up. Again, it's in the WikiLeaks. It's in the white papers they write. It's all just total proof of treason. There's a big video we just posted, Infowars.com, the law that can take down the deep state that goes over just a small part of it, but very eloquently. But when we return, I want to get into an area that we haven't hit yet, the cyber wars. And they've got attack dog groups that study the anthropology, the sociology, the psychology, the history of the United States, and know about our Christian ethos and our serious guilt uh, for slavery and things like that. The whole world has histories on average much worse than ours, but those histories aren't taught, only histories that make America look bad. But separately in the West, we have hands down a history of treating women the very best, of women's suffrage, of women's empowerment, of women in positions of power. The West undoubtedly has the best record on racial equality, the best record on women's rights, the best record on uh, allowing homosexuals to live in peace. But of course, all those supposed groups hate the West and believe it's the worst thing on earth. You go, why is that? Because if you've got a history of, of nations in the West that, that, that are tolerant, you use their tolerance against them, and then you name socialism, communism, globalism, gay or liberal or pro-black. And then people go, well, I better accept communism or socialism, even though it's economically horrible, and I know it doesn't work, and it's bad, but only lets the elite run things. I better do it because I'll be called a racist. And, and, and so it becomes like a religious sacrament. So it's nothing but political cover, that, that you'll be bullied, you'll be attacked if you're not part of the, you know, the in club, the, the anointed ones, uh, who are just basically like club joiners. That's what leftists really are, are, are just people that want a virtue signal, but statistically actually don't give to charity, and many are very racist people. I mean, uh, the worst people you're going to find are liberals. And they believe they're in a club that is, has priest power to control people and say who's good and say who isn't good. Uh, so... It's everything bad about secret societies and clubs on steroids. So you have the Southern Poverty Law Center that has reportedly over a billion dollars offshore and who, who, who trains law enforcement, trains universities, trains governments, and who has control of elementary school curriculum, uh, who says if you don't like drag queen story time with convicted child molesters or murderers, literally, uh, they've actually called groups that are against convicted murderers being with small children at gay sex shows, uh, then, then they come out and say you're bad. And I'm going to show you articles in a moment. So you've got the head of the SPLC, their, their subdirectors all resigning as it comes out that they are incredibly racist reportedly, incredibly sexist. Whether that's true or not, they're eating their own. But in my experience with leftists, you don't find people more racist, more evil, more corrupt. So SPLC implodes, president and legal director resign amid sexual misconduct scandal. That was last week. Now, more SPLC employees step forward, claim systemic culture of racism and sexism. But uh, Michelle Obama, her chief of staff, has taken over to go investigate. Oh, yes. Southern Poverty Law Center urges teachers to lecture first graders about microaggressions and structural racism, brainwash kids to all fight with each other over what color they are, the opposite of Martin Luther King's plan. And so it just goes on from there. Now, dovetail that hypocrisy of what they're doing with Kavanaugh, no proof, almost all the women came out and said it was fake, with what they're doing, reportedly raping women, reportedly sexually assaulting women, getting away with it, paying them off, I mean, you've got a few directors of this that all have hundreds of millions of piece reportedly in slush funds. That's a piece. And their job is to bilk conservatives, uh, 
liberals, you name it, who over the years, going back 30, 40 years, would, would, would hear about stop racism in the South, send $20 in to make sure black people can vote. I, 30 years ago, my mother and my dad bought the bull, and they, and they were a mix of conservative and liberal, and thought, yeah, the Southern poverty law has a name like, you know, it's in Alabama, and we're going to help poor black people. Because, you know, my dad's dad had helped get black folks able to vote. He was in state government. But that's not who they are. They're monsters, ladies and gentlemen, involved in Oklahoma City, you name it. So think of the hypocrisy as it all comes down. It's beyond hypocrisy. Kavanaugh, believe all the women. But when the leftists do it, don't. Now, um, different White House officials have come out and said, look at Joe Biden with uh, different members of the Democratic Party coming out and saying that when he was around them, even in public, sometimes on video, he would grab their bodies, he would kiss them, he would fondle them. There's hours of footage of creepy Joe Biden, and that's what the White House said. They just said, search engine creepy Joe Biden. Well, you know, Google will just block those searches now. They always attack me and say, Jones claims Biden kisses little girls and rubs on them and plays with their hair and puts his hands on women's hips. And I mean, you get punched most places doing this. And we have hours, hours of this footage. In fact, tonight, I'm going to stay late and compile it all because we always just kind of show the first of the real, never the deeper stuff, the really, really bad stuff where he's, p parents are pushing him off their kids. He's rubbing their shoulders, rubbing their hair, rubbing their cheeks. Uh, I mean, it, it just goes on and on. Full-grown women, he's grabbing their breast. But see, when Joe Biden does it, it's okay. He does it on C-SPAN. He does it hiding in plain view. Biden defends his behavior with women. The allegation was made in a New York Magazine article by Lucy Flores, who is attractive, a former Nevada state representative and 2014 Democratic nominee for Nevada lieutenant governor. Biden doesn't deny he ran his hands through her hair and tried to kiss her and did kiss her. If anybody just types in creepy Uncle Joe videos, you'll come up with a treasure trove, Conway told. If anybody just types in creepy Uncle Joe, you'll come up with a treasure trove, Conway told Fox News Sunday. So all I'm saying is, According to his yardstick and according to how he acts and, and him rubbing under that little girl's arm and down her side and kissing her and, and, and you see the mother right there pushing him away and these kids really scared being around him, him right up next to their face, breathing in their face. I mean, this is creepy Uncle Joe. And I've got all the dirt on him up in Maine. Um, what, his brother owns a bar? Oh, I learned about that from your neighbor. Yeah, the guy that you bought the property from? Yeah. I know all about it, Joe. And he always literally start grabbing women's stomachs and squeezing them or rubbing women's butts. Yeah, here's some photos. If you're a TV viewer, you can see this. Uh, putting his hands, having a woman sit on his lap, and then rubbing her hips. I mean, unless the people are swingers and you're in their hotel room, Joe, you shouldn't be doing that. And you see the husband in that photo looking like he's about to punch him. And there he is, attractive woman, kissing her in a very creepy way. Oh, and the baby, like, moves away from being kissed right there. Yeah, now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of these videos. Because we always just skim the surface. And then the Southern Poverty Law Center and the ADL, Media Matters, come out and attack me. It just goes, oh, here he is, rubbing his hands very, I mean, you know when somebody kisses a baby, and, oh, your baby's cute, kiss him. That's one thing, but it's it's sickeningly, like sensually, oh, rubbing little girl's shoulders, rubbing under her chin. I mean, that's the way I rub my wife under her chin. When I'm like, come on, baby, don't worry about that. Why don't you come over here and sit on my lap? And I'll put my finger right under her jawline and rub her. Then I'll run my hand right back in her hair and pull her into me. He's doing that to little girls. That's how you have sex with a woman. And the next you reach in, you kiss him on the neck. He does that. He rubs their neck. That's how you get a horse, by the way, to not buck against you. You just rub on the neck a little bit. Then you just lean in. These are little girls, folks. Move for prosecution of them. He becomes someone who's aiding and abetting them. But the president's not going to stand for that. We have some more clips of him making just those points. We're going to play in a moment. But I want it to sink into listeners. And I know I keep saying this, but you have to understand. You are the supporters of the broadcast that got Trump elected. The globalists admit that. You, you took Trump over the top. Worldwide, 
from Australia to Brazil to Spain to Greece to the UK. Nigel Farage has been on and said multiple times, UKIP got half its support. I used to have him on like all the time 15 years ago. And he goes, suddenly I go knock on doors. People knew who I was then. We were able to share the party. That's the show. That's you. We helped launch Brexit. Now it's a fight. Of course, it's not going to be easy. But now the fact that the EU is a dictatorship is out in the open. All these nationalist operations, nobody ever launched a big anti-globalist show that really laid it all out. They always got off into UFOs or they got off into the Vatican or Jews or whatever. And all that is a distraction on purpose to not make it about humanity unifying around open, free, free market societies and coming together and renaissance and Americana. The globalists had formulas to sabotage all the movements. They didn't sabotage us. They didn't sabotage Ron Paul. Ron Paul was critical in this, or, 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 or Matt Drudge or others, or World Net Daily. And we built an alternative to globalism that's been picked up everywhere, and now we've gone from no seats in power to winning almost every election. There have been hundreds of elections and in almost every election, right-wingers, nationalists, free marketers, patriots are getting elected. The globalist plan is to kill any national sovereignty, flooding countries with illegal aliens who then are political chattel of the bureaucracy. So it's a fight between the people, the bureaucracy, and the deep state. And as long as we identify that, we're going to win. But I cannot stress enough how critical the fight is now. John Bound has filed a very important reporter titled The Border is Beyond Broken. It's on Infowars.com. And the UN is trying to fully break our border with traitors inside our government now. Once they break it, once the courts are overwhelmed, once the facilities are overwhelmed, then the even bigger floods come. This is law and order being broken, Mad Max, Road Warrior level anarchy being introduced. This is the globalist takedown model. Here is the video. Beto O'Rourke, the Irishman who identifies as Hispanic, unleashed his candidacy for president and celebrated his platform to break the back of America in El Paso, Texas, by keeping the southern borders wide open. We will find security not through walls, not through militarization. We will find security by focusing on our ports of entry that connect us to the rest of the world so we have a better idea of who and what is coming in here, and we facilitate the trade and travel connected to the millions of jobs around this country. Meanwhile, Mexico warns that a caravan of over 20,000 Central Americans is heading towards the U.S. border. While as the Arizona Central reports, U.S. Border Patrol officials in Arizona said they have started releasing migrant families from their custody into the streets of Yuma because processing centers can't cope with the large numbers of arriving families and minors. Additionally, Princeton Policy Advisors researcher Stephen Kopitz projects that in 2019, there will be up to 500,000 illegal aliens at the southern border who successfully cross into the U.S. undetected by Border Patrol agents. Two weeks ago, I briefed the media and testified in Congress that our immigration system was at the breaking point. That breaking point has arrived this week at our border. And nowhere has that crisis manifested more acutely than here in El Paso. On Monday and Tuesday, CBP started the day with over 12,000 migrants in our custody. As of this morning, that number was 13,400. A high number for us is 4,000. A crisis level is 6,000. 13,000 is unprecedented. The arriving flows are made up primarily of Central American families and unaccompanied children, over 65% of them. These groups cannot be repatriated expeditiously and instead are almost guaranteed to be released to remain in the U.S. indefinitely, regardless of the merits of their immigration or asylum claim. And within that flow are thousands of criminals, smugglers, gang members, and public safety threats that we're sworn to protect this country from. With up to 40% or more of our personnel in key sectors like El Paso working to care for, transport, provide medical and hospital watch, 
uh, for families and children. That means our security posture at the border is negatively impacted. The same criminal organizations that are smuggling migrants, profiting from them, abusing them in the journey, are benefiting from our reduced security presence. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing adults who are trying to evade capture behind those families as we're bogged down with large groups. As the surge continues to be unmanageable, Trump's warning that the borders will be closed sets up yet another fight with Congress as another partial government shutdown could begin soon if negotiations continue to stall. Number one, Congress has to act. And number two, Mexico, they make so much money from the United States and so many other things, so many other assets, they have to grab it and they have to stop it. We have right now two big caravans coming up from Guatemala, massive caravans walking right through Mexico. So Mexico's tough, they can stop them, but they chose not to. Now they're gonna stop them. And if they don't stop them, we're closing the border. They'll close it, and we'll, we'll keep it closed for a long time. I'm not playing games. The Democrats should be proud of their anti-American intentions. They are still winning the unprecedented United Nations battle to destroy America from within. John Baum reporting. That is an incredible report. Everyone listening should go to Infowars.com, get the report, and share it with everyone you know. Now, again, people are probably asking, Alex, you're all over the news. They're saying all these incredible things about you. Why aren't you countering the fact that you're one of the top stories in the country where you, quote, admit you're mentally ill and everything you say is BS? Never said any of that. Didn't say that. That's a lie. It's all edited. I don't matter at the end of the day. This transmission platform matters. This is big stuff to, at our border. This is big stuff the president's doing. He's now delivering. He's now hit his second wind. It's amazing. So, yes, pray for us. Pray for the president. But... The main front and center news is not what's going on with InfoWars. Yes, it's important. It shows how the media lies. Don't we already know how much the corporate media lies? The biggest thing you can do, next segment, so I've been already talking about this for an hour and a half, I want to get into what you think historically, because you're quite a historian, not just a lawyer, a constitutional lawyer, and a guy that's worked obviously in highest levels of criminal stuff as a defense lawyer, what Trump should do legally and lawfully, what the crimes are committed by the deep state, we know there's a lot. We've gone over some of them, the ways they could be charged, classical treason, but a lot of easier ways to go after them. We'll do that next segment. But since you're talking about it during the break, we saw, given to the media, even though it's on the video, we say 60 days still could be released, even then maybe not, my so-called deposition. And then we see uh, claims that I'm saying, we're going to play the clip in a moment, that uh, I have uh, a form of psychosis. I wasn't diagnosed with that. I, I don't have a degree in that. What I was saying is, is that when the media lies so much and you've been told lies, it, 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 it induces a state historically where people start believing nothing. And then much of the public thinks I'm Bill Hicks or, or Bo Bridges. So you got people on one end that believe the earth is flat uh, and that the moon is made of cheese because the government says it isn't. And then you've got the other end where they say, you know, that Pre President Trump's a Russian agent. We've got all the proof. And then Jake Tapper comes out and says, we never said that today. So, so you've got two ends, one lying on purpose, confusing people, the other uh, not knowing what's real anymore and kind of floating around. I, I was simply saying they are inducing, instead of the Stockholm Syndrome, where I just believe anything they say, I went the other way and said, I don't believe anything you say, which with a known liar is kind of the default. But that is kind of a psychosis, meaning that it blurs your cultural, historical, uh, temporal understanding of things when you're given nothing but garbage how do you then come up with a response that's accurate, garbage in, garbage out? So they took that as Jones admits he is a basically a psychotic or, or that he has psychosis, which is not. I said almost a type of psychosis in that I would overly see things as all staged or, or, or at least they were covering something up, which they, it turns out they've sued the police saying they did cover up response time and things. So I'm ranting here. We'll get to that clip in a moment. But what is your general... Uh, thumbnail of, of where you see this going, what they're trying to do. 
So it's really a systematic effort to suppress independent speech in the in the end, particularly the independent press and the people's ability to respond and react and to make, choose their own news, choose their own views across the board. So it's a systematic effort. It's done by it's being orchestrated by people at the top politically, people who have an agenda that is different than the agenda of the uh, of free speech or free press in the country. So they don't believe in freedom of ideas. They don't believe in freedom of thought. And so those people who are celebrating these kind of suits, uh, who want suppression of speech and want suppression of press are people who are hostile and uh, antithetical to the core values of the American Constitution. And that's really what's sort of fundamentally happening. And that's what the big debate is. What you're seeing is you look at what the mainstream media did in propagating a clearly a dangerous hoax about Russia collusion delusion with, that could have led us into nuclear conflict with the greatest nuclear power in the world. And you see a complete lack of responsibility and accountability across the board. By contrast, you look at what happened here where you talk about Sandy Hook in different contexts. You discuss it in different contexts. Uh, when you recognize you made mistakes, you admit and acknowledge those mistakes. And instead, there's a constant effort to demonize, constant effort to defame, constant effort to destroy. So you see a complete disparity in how they're treating the independent press versus the institutional press. They want the institutional press to have the only approved narrative, the only one who can propagate a story. The and only they reward stonewalling and lying. But, but they punish people that actually try to set the record straight. Absolutely. So those who are people who are honest and authentic and, and recognize errors when those errors occur, recognize mistakes, recognize the state of mind when the state of mind is what it is, those people are the ones getting disproportionately punished. Those are the people who are disproportionately prosecuted. Those are the people disproportionately persecuted by the institutional press using their collusion with big institutional tech and social media. Because press. we actually have a state of mind. We're trying to figure things out. The establishment just comes up with whatever they want and then just say that. That's it. Precisely. I mean, you see it. I mean, you couldn't have a bigger disparity between people who raised questions and people who had doubts about what happened in different cases across in, in the past, going all the way back to Operation Northwoods and its modus operandi, and how the institutional press covered the Russia collusion delusion, where they defamed all kinds of people all across the country. None of them have suffered any consequences for what they did. None of them are accepting or acknowledging any responsibility for what they did. Many of them are doubling down like Jake Tapper did. Uh, and CNN spread all kinds of fake news. Some of the leading fake news stories were spread by CNN. CNN was the one that was out there saying that Manafort had personally met Julian Assange at the Ecuadorian embassy, quoting the Guardian story. It was all just knowingly made up. Precisely, completely fictitious from beginning to end. So, so my point is people that believe folks that have lied to them about WMDs, Gulf of Tonkin, Northwoods, the Covington kids, uh, Kavanaugh hearings, uh, Russiagate, uh, you know, all these other Smollett, the, the left especially is always... And I know the right wing stages things sometimes too, but what is it about the left in history where they just are, they always are staging stuff? I would call the Nazis left because they were national socialists. They were always staging false flags. Oh, yeah. Almost nobody uh, staged things more often than the Nazis did, including the burning down of the Reichstag that gave them the power in the first place to destroy democratic institutions in Germany. An Operation Himmler to start World War II? Precisely. So uh, the people think uh, the Nazis were elected into power. They were not. They used false narratives and Jesse Smollett-style, grand-scale staged events to seize power away from democratic institutions. They had newsreels every day. Jews beat up and killed a three-year-old German boy. I mean, it was it was the same crap. Every kind of they uh, then hung the poor German boy. I mean, just one fake thing after the next fake thing, and they use it to seize and control power. And I think what the left understands, and because the left is more statist, and because they're more statist, what the left and the Nazis have in common and the fascists have in common is that they believed in the state as the centralizing institution, and that's what sort of libertarian. The state is God under communism, socialism, fascism. Precisely. And because they're so status, they understand the need for narrative. They understand propaganda and its role and its tool. They understand, that's why they love secret intelligence. That's why they love the, you know, the Stasi and the, and the KGB have their worst reputations under communist or statist rule. So same with the fascist and the SS. Because they could just inflate totally made up hysterics. Precisely. And they understand the need for narrative, to control narrative, to motivate moral panic. And that's why they admit, you've, you've met with some of the top editors of the country, they we we don't the establishment doesn't want Jones to put out a counter narrative because we've noticed his audience is big enough to challenge a narrative. He's messing up our future narratives. It's just incredible. And 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 then now they're pushing uh, for even more censorship. And I don't know if you can say the names of the groups, but you met with major editors. They said, No, we've been told by the lawyers we're getting funded to take Jones out as a kill shot. 
Precisely. That, that was their exact words, that they're not using this lawsuit to seek any recovery for other people, but that what the media had been told, main uh, high-ranking uh, reporters and editors with major publications, was that this lawsuit was a kill shot uh, on you and a kill shot on independent press in the country of this kind. And these are people who are politically antithetical to your positions, politically hostile to your audience, and they recognize that if the case was handled in the way they thought should be handled correctly legally, the case would be dismissed. That this is about what would what you're seeing and what you were describing is sort of the reactions that people have to constant fake, to being smolleted over and over and over again, is what you see in people who dealt with it in the institutional status press. So people in Russia, people in Cuba today don't believe anything their government tells them, even if a third of it, at least, or half of it may be true, because they're so used and accustomed to Because you life. can't, and, and I'm saying, living in an authoritarian regime, historians have said, is like being mentally ill, because you don't know what's true. And that's what I was saying. They took it and spun it that I'm saying I'm literally mentally ill. Exactly. I mean, they wanted to spin it the way they wanted to spin it in order to be on a constant effort to deplatform and defame you and to destroy your audience and the ability of the independent press to functionally operate economically, socially, and politically in the country. I want to get to those clips, as I mentioned, and then we'll, and then we'll get a, a, a prelude to a video we're going to shoot tonight. We'll do more tomorrow about intel I've got and about where the president's going and the fact that he is going to move against big tech, we've now been told. These are from good sources. And that he is going to move uh, with uh, criminal action the media spins that i mean we're going to be criminals no i mean criminal justice system uh, they use the i guess the general public's lack of understanding of, of, of verbiage to, to say that i want violence when i say we'd use the criminal justice system no i mean trump is preparing to move against them and what you expect connecticut at the same firm senator blumenthal and his son they're quarterbacking it senator murphy's openly involved defaming me everywhere this is high level and they, they admit it's to get rid of the free speech for conservatives that's why it affects you it affects everybody else a lot of folks are starting to get this, like Laura Ingram and uh, Sean Hannity and Tucker Carlson, but even people above them. And uh, Bob can't get into the, all the details, but he's got a lot of the inside baseball. So do I. But people are now really understanding the real shape of this. They thought they were going to creep through with all this. They're not going to do it. Big stuff is about to happen. But here, here I am talking about how the media lies to us and how when we're living under an authoritarianism, it becomes almost like a form of, of psychosis because you don't know what's real anymore. And I talk about this all the time. It doesn't mean, I agree, I've been diagnosed as, as, as being psychotic. Not the case. So here it is. Do you think that there's a question that I should have asked you today in deposition that I didn't? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, question you should ask me. I can't think of any. Okay, Mr. Jones. You would agree with me that when some damage happens, when you break something, when you, you cause something to be lost, when you hurt somebody, whether it's intentional or whether it's a mistake, there's consequences for that, right? People should be accountable for the people they hurt. Objection is to form. Well, sometimes people claim they've been hurt and they haven't been. So you have to look at the agenda behind things. You have to balance things about why has the mainstream media lied so much, why have governments lied so much to the fact the public doesn't believe what they're told anymore, and are we going to criminalize questioning Jesse Smollett or WMDs or babies in incubators? And it really is the fact that we've allowed the government and institutions to become so corrupt that people lost any compass of what's real. And I, you know, I myself have, you know, almost had like a form of psychosis back in the past where I basically thought everything was staged, even though I've now learned a lot of times things aren't staged. So, um, you know, I think as, as a pundit and someone giving opinion um, that, you know, my opinions have been wrong, but they were never wrong consciously to hurt people. Uh, and so I think it's you know, part of that process of me growing up in Rockwell, Texas and watching the police steal drugs and then conduct anti-drug programs at the school. I think that shook my opinion of police in general. And I was very anti-law enforcement until I grew up and learned more things and now I'm pretty much pro-police. So it's, 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 it's been a process. Bob, I said it's something almost like a form. When, when you've been lied to and so many things are fake, 
you then start thinking everything's fake. That's a very honest response. Oh, absolutely. It's very authentic. It's very correct. It's very accurate. It's very descriptive. Uh, it, it's intended to communicate precisely what happened and how it happened and why it happened. And it reflects what happens when the institutional media is the exclusive monopolistic gatekeeper of any kind of story framework. Where people in the 1950s, we all believed what the news media was telling us. So like in Las Vegas, where I live, people would go out and have little picnics while the nuclear bombs went off and they would watch them together. And Eisenhower specifically directed the local people, the local media of the military press operation to not tell people that they could get contamination and die. And what we had like double the rate of uh, cancers after that. In fact, John Wayne thought he got that because he thought it was safe and filmed a movie there that year. Precisely. So this is, I mean, taking in our uh, African-American military. And, and he veterans. believed uh, the government. Absolutely. We took in our African-American military veterans and used them as test subjects for various uh, drugs and products and diseases. We, uh, we've done horrific things. Operation Northwoods was a joint chief of staff approved event in 1961 that went to the president of the United States, who luckily rejected it, but, uh, but said, let's uh, do false flags, let's stage events, and let's blame foreign governments for our own domestic terrorism. And his brother Bobby, though, accepted a counter plan to bomb the U.S. Embassy in Honduras uh, to have a coup there, but then that got shot down. Well, you have, I mean, when you have people who are working for United Fruit Company, like the Dulles brothers, and then they go in and have high-ranking positions of power within the institutional law enforcement and intelligence superstructures, and they're engaged in helping their corporate clients uh, get rich off of coups, then you have an extraordinary set of events. So it's very natural for a lot of Americans to have deep doubts about the institutional narratives they've been told, just like those who were, were willing to be skeptical of the Russiagate story over the last two years. It turned out they were right. The and again, a psychosis is only where you... You can't differentiate reality. It could be on one issue, a hundred issues. Like people that have been attacked by a certain color pit bull. They see a pit bull come on the street, they get scared and run off. It's a psychosis because they don't know that dog's going to attack them, but it's a real natural uh, form of insanity because they've been attacked by something that looked like that before. Absolutely. I mean, the damage, as even people on the left, people like Aaron Mate at the, the Nation, people like Glenn Greenwald at The Intercept, people like Michael Tracy, who used to be part of the Young Turks, are all saying the media has done more damage to the credibility of the media where they're pushing the Russian collusion delusion than any single media act since the 1950s and 1950s. Oh, yeah, I think this is bigger because the Red Scare, there were actual commies they were going after. They went too right. far sometimes, but there was really something going on. Precisely. Th this time, there's just nothing. This I was mean, a Donald Trump getting paid off by anybody, that dude doesn't trust anybody. <laughs> yeah, that was that was absurd from day one. All of it was was ludicrous on top of ludicrous. But what they were trying to do was to provoke a potential conflict with the world's other largest nuclear power. Exactly. And if you think Trump would go in a hotel room and get pissed on, you're crazy. Precisely. No, nothing. Oh, let me set problem. myself up and go in a Russian hotel room and be peed on. Exactly. The guy who's very paranoid and is a and is a clean. Oh, he's freak obsessed with clean freak. Absolutely. Uh, the, he has a little bit of Howard Hughes in him in that regard. So everybody knew that story was fake. That knew anything about Trump or that knew anything about Russia and yet they propagated it repeatedly, routinely. By the way, he was Howard. He, he made himself get over it with basically aversion therapy. But that's a big secret about Trump is he was he would have to leave you around a woman for weeks and weeks and, like, decide where he could even be with him or kiss him. Then he kind of got wild and got over that. But the point is, is that, I mean, Trump used to be Howard Hughes. Oh, yeah, he didn't like to shake anyone's hands. I mean, that was one well known about him. So it was extraordinary in the campaign, his ability to sh uh, talk to strangers and shake hands. Well, he got over it. He overcame he it. He forced it. But, the, but anybody He's not here that he wants to get pissed on. No, it's, it's absurd. Insane. Hey, hey, but we're almost out of time. We're going to shoot a special report tonight that's going to air later at about 9 o'clock or so. We have some big exclusive. When I say exclusive, it's too big to even get to. We ran out of time here. But let's play this one more clip. Because uh, you do a great job here. This is you off camera. When Bankston, this funny guy, starts asking me about bowls of chili and stuff, and the whole Internet's on fire about this. Here it is. Um, that's, from my memory, not what happens. I, I can't comment on hypotheticals. Oh, so if, if I was to say to you, if somebody was to come along and strike your hand with a hammer, would it hurt? You can't answer that question. Objection is to... I'm not striking anybody with hammers. If I asked you if I gave you a big bowl of chili, might it affect your memory... You can't answer that. That's hypothetical. Correct? You're just not going to answer those kind of questions. I'll take it. That's no. 
Let's move on. I'll take it. That wasn't I a mean, question. Yeah, that's, is that a question? Is that, it? That's a comment. That's not a question. I, this is becoming one of the most harassing of death. This is for TV and for PR, not for a legitimate suit. That's what this is. That's all this is. You want to put it on TV. That's all. This is just a show, and it's a bad show at that. It's a show of how not to be a lawyer in deposition of a case show. I mean, if you want to be fair and you want to ask real questions, go ahead. But don't make, don't make comments and then try to reinterpret those comments as a question and then try to put words in the mouth of the witness. I mean, first-year law student should know that. What was your objection? The objection was to your comment saying that there was an answer, and my point was you didn't ask a question, so there couldn't have been an answer, and I was objecting for the record purposes that no answer had been given to a question that had not been asked. Do you maybe want to take a break so we can have a few breaths? Yes, maybe you so. Can, yeah, you might need to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And maybe you can go back and read how to ask people questions. What do you think's going on there? I mean, everything was just about getting another news article. Yeah, it, precisely. This was not a serious lawyer asking serious questions about a serious deposition. It was purely a PR strategy of a PR campaign about a suit that does not have a what legal... What should the families think about this? Because I know they've kind of been cloistered and are fed by these folks that he's torturing you, he's coming after you, he's going to get you, and none of that's been going on ever. Correct. I mean, they, all of those stories that have come out in the press have always been false. There's never been any targeting of any families, never any desire to hurt or harass any families. By us. It, precisely. Absolutely. In fact, there's been constant criticism of people who are trying to do that. So the uh, that's always been sort of a mythology. But here you have a, a lawyer who he was making faces, juvenile reactions throughout the deposition. Well, let's just show it. He was doing this. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. It was the weirdest. It's the worst deposition behavior I've seen of a professional. By the way, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> 